Okay, Lee. Our, uh... So which mic are you going to let Jared have? Okay. Well, well, I mean, I got two of them here, so I need to know. Um, Where's he going? Is he going to be sitting right here? Jeff's going to be sitting right there. Okay. 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 No, Jeff is. Yeah, Kelly's going to be here. Okay. We need to do a mic check. Can you hear me all right? Can you hear me? I can. So that works out pretty well. Is he going to tell us when to when to go? I think so. <laughs> I mean, is somebody going to be doing that? I think so, yeah. Okay. I think that's what Gene's job is going to be. Okay. And I can tell you here, so, too. Sorry, I'm this asking be... so many questions. No, you're fine. I may. You... Can I use this other chair? You can use any chair you want.
number 13, Colton Clausen. And now the starting lineup for the home team, the New Mexico Military Institute Broncos. Leading on for the Broncos will be left fielder number one, Bernie Soltanis. The two spot hitter, right fielder number 10, Jung Ho Song. Hitting third and playing at third base, number six, Daniel Lizarraga. The cleanup man for NMMI, playing behind the plate, number 17, Seo Jung Ho. Hitting fifth and in center field, number 10, Adonis Bernal. In the sixth spot, designated hitter, number seven, E. Brian Han. Hitting seventh and playing at shortstop, number 19, Jun Hup Kwan. And in the eighth spot, first baseman, number 37, Julian Bayan. Hitting ninth and at second base will be number nine, MJ Kim. And the starting pitcher here in game three for the Institute, number three, Omier Alvidrez. Also want to mention, we do have a little bit of a special live stream to today. We're going to have a three camera setup. There's going to be one pointing back from center field towards the plate and one at first base. So check that out if you get a chance and tell your uh, uh, friends and family. The information about the live stream is on the game program there at the bottom left of the program, ksvptv.com. It will be archived for viewing later on as well. All righty, welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is uh, game three here between the Western Texas College Westerners and the New Mexico Military Institute Broncos. Western Texas took two from New Mexico Military Institute yesterday, and we just didn't hit the ball real well. I guess we start off, introduce ourselves, who we got up here in the booth and doing the talking today. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm the color guy, Lee Johnson. Mr. Johnson, yeah. uh, uh, it's good to meet you. We just met here before the game, yes, uh, and it's, I'm glad to have you out here. This is going to be awesome. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, yeah, uh, the Colts uh, or Broncos dropped two, and uh, I, I noticed that the pit, pitching we gave up seven home runs, and if you give up that that many long balls, you better match them if you can. And, and uh, anyway. That's a great point, and that's exactly what did not happen yesterday. I right. mean, they hit seven bombs. I mean, a couple of them were for multiple whatever, but uh, we hit a zero. And I'm going to give it, leave it off to you here because I'm going to start us off with the National Anthem here in just a second. So, And here come your Broncos in left field. Sakatis, Solomon right, Lizaraga at third, O oh, at behind the plate. So Broncos just take the field, and uh, we're fixing to have the national anthem before the first pitch. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, if you would please stand. Peace the flags there in right center field and help us honor America with the playing of our national anthem. So the Broncos taking the field. Um, 
the wind has picked up and it's supposed to blow pretty good this afternoon. Looks like it's gonna blow from from the left field foul pole to the right field foul pole. So anything in the air to the right side is definitely gonna be helped by the by the wind. We definitely had some uh, home runs yesterday to uh, right field there. Uh, probably about over half. I think maybe four or five of those seven home runs that Western Texas hit yesterday were from right center or towards the foul pole. But I don't know that any of them were necessarily wind aided. They probably would have been out here anyway. They were just swinging a very heavy, hard bat, and uh, we just could not match. Right. So on the mound for the Broncos is uh, Ovier Alvarez. Um, he has a, he's coming into today with a six and two record and an ERA of five point one one. Definitely one of the best on the Bronco pitching staff, and don't let that five uh, uh, above five ERA fool you. Anything below about a seven in conference play is pretty darn good. Uh, uh, this is a conference that is all about the offense. Uh, uh, all the coaches in this conference like to play the elevate to celebrate type type ball. Right. Um, you will see a little bit different than with Western Texas, uh, uh, especially number three yesterday, Dylan Tate. He is a kind of a bunt specialist, and he laid down a couple for base hits and did a good job sacrificing uh, yesterday. He is the going to be the seventh spot hitter in the lineup for WTC, but you don't see a lot of small ball in Western. A junior college athletic conference right. play. That's right. just the way it is. Well, speaking of records, as of yesterday's game in conference, Western Texas is seven and fifteen and fourteen and twenty-six overall. I look. I looked this morning because uh, we didn't have any scores from the Midland College Howard games yesterday. I found out what they were. So even though the Broncos lost, we're still tied for second with Odessa College and uh, behind uh, NMJC and, and Midland College. Excellent, excellent, yeah. that's. Uh, I wish we had a little graphic we could show that of the Wildcats standings and what's going on. Right. First up for WTC, center fielder number eight, Nathaniel Lopez. And I'm kind of doing a little double duty here during the PA until we get uh, Kelly McDonald. He'll be coming out here to assist us as well. All right. Looks like the defense playing straight away to start with. First pitch was a ball high, fastball to the second baseman, Lopez. Another fastball away, counts 2-0. Walks were a little bit of a problem for the NMMI pitching staff yesterday, and that added to some extra runs, even on you know some of the base hits, including the ones that went over the fence there for the Westerners yesterday. Alvarez is up with everything right now, so. And like I said, he is definitely one of the tops on the staff, six and two record with a, well, one of the lower ERAs on the team. But walks the first one. Not the way you want to start. I don't know what the percentage is. I don't know what the percentage is on lead, the lead-off walk of an inning, but they score a lot. You know, Coach Cook has a bunch of those stats in the locker rooms. Talks about, yeah, if the leadoff runner gets on board with nobody out. Also, you know, batting averages and how much they increase based on what the count is, how much it is in your favor, whether it's, you know, 0 and 2 versus, you know, a 3 and 1 count. And right. I mean, it's dramatic. Uh, uh, you know, it goes from like a 145 to, uh, you know, a 380 batting average uh, uh, difference. So uh, uh, up to bat, Evan Morrison, the first baseman. He is a big left-handed hitter. He struck out his first time uh, uh, yesterday in game one and then came back and hit two dingers. He, he was two, <laughs> two of the seven. That's right. He was two of the seven. He, he, he's, a, he's an impos imposing threat at the plate, no doubt. And an interesting 
situation too with his size and power you'd think he'd be down you know three four spot hitter right but uh, uh, evidently he makes contact often enough that they like him in the two spot somebody that you know they can drive over Lopez onto the next base you know he's only hitting 250 though so is he yes wow, that's real surprising that, that they're putting him in the two spot but it could be that he's seeing the ball really really well right now and coach knew that and so moving him up in the order and that's kind of what you're seeing a little bit in in MMI's order with Quan dropped down all the way to the seven spot right normally he's floating in our three four spot but he just he struck out a lot yesterday and was having trouble seeing the ball oh got him picked off and got him that's the problem with the left-hander right there, that move, and Lopez just got caught leaning. Great move by Alvarez. So now you got one down, and the bases are clear. The 2-2 two -two count here against Evan Morrison. I guess you walk them and then pick them off, and you don't, it that cancels works. the walk. <laughs> That's right. Doesn't affect your, you know, uh, uh, the, the hitting percentage against you either, right? Right. But I guess your strikeouts to walks ratio and the, what's the new stat uh, whip, and I don't even know what the new Moneyball stats are or anything right. like that, but strikeouts per inning. And got him. Struck him out. Like I said, but that's something. He did this exact same thing uh, uh, game one, and I thought, okay, well, you know, we struck the first two batters out, and they came back and scored three runs that inning. Right. So you got to get the third out as well. Next set, plate, number 21, Sebastian Huerta. So the catcher's up, Sebastian Huerta. Two outs, nobody on. First pitch fouled off down the third baseline. And no attempt by the coaches to, to grab that. I don't know if you can quite see that on the stream or not, depending on which angle, but... A lot of times the coaches like to kind of show off their, their fielding skills still, still. Unless it's too hot. Of course, they got no glove to protect themselves either. Sebastian's hitting 277 on the season. That's what I was just looking for as I was trying to pull up the, the batting stats there. And you beat me to it. Right. <laughs> one and one the count here. Two down here in the top of the first inning. And MMI trying to do, uh, get a little bit better start here today. We just didn't score a lot of runs yesterday. Gave up quite a few. Coach Cook said before the series uh, 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 at the end of the sweet, yes, uh, last weekend against Clarendon College that the, he knew that Western Texas College's pitching it was a little bit better probably he thought than the Bulldogs were. And it would be a little bit more difficult, but... I don't think that the hitters quite expected that. Uh, right. We scored seven runs in two games, and that's yeah, not going to win you a lot of conference you, matches. You've got to score at least that a game, don't it, you? You do. You really do. Ducks out of the way of the high fastball. Maybe a breaking pitch, not sure. Up around the neck. I got a little intel on the pitcher, Alvarez. He throws a two-seam fastball, a cut fastball, which is similar to a slider. Okay. And they... I was told his out pitch is a split finger fastball. So he's up again with the pitch. Well, remarkably similar start here to game one yesterday. Got the first two outs in order and then walked the next batter. Next set to play, number seven, Harrison Helton. But we, so anyway, of mine needs to try and find this final out here. Got Nathaniel Lopez on the pickoff move after the walk and struck Evan Morrison out. Walked Huerta and now Helton at the plate. Lefty takes a look and the runner respecting him that time. He took a step back before Alvidrez went to the plate. Nice little curveball in for the strike. So Helton's hitting right now, starting the day at, it looks like 239 on my sheet. Okay. Yeah. And you can see, I mean, the averages for junior college baseball, typically, I mean, if you're not hitting, you know, 
close to 300. You're probably not going to be in the starting lineup uh, 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 for the most part. But so Western Texas College, they've got a lot of guys that are sub 300, but they hit incredibly well yesterday. So now, that's what you don't want as an opposing team is is a team to get hot. Exactly. I mean, and they, obviously they were hot yesterday. Of course, trying to carry that into today's game. Yeah. Um, and we've talked about the home runs uh, a couple of times already, but they put the ball in play. They didn't strike out a ton. I mean, they had a few. Uh, uh, and we are a good strikeout pitching team, the New Mexico Military Institute pitching staff as a whole is. But they just they put the ball in play, and they got, they got singles and doubles and triples as well. So. Right. See, that was that little cut fastball then. Okay. He's just up, he's up a bunch with everything, and uh, he's worked the count full again. Well, and this is what you don't really want to see if you're Coach Cook, too, because he's throwing a lot of extra pitches, and now instead of being able to go four, five, six innings, now you end up going two, three, four, uh, uh, you know, not getting quite as many as you want. Got him to pop up, though, and we'll see if, oh, oh, he lost it uh. in the sun. And that's going to cause a run to score. Good base running there with two outs there by Huerta. Goes all the way from first to home and just one of those sun-aided singles there as the second baseman, MJ Kim, had it for a second and then lost it in the sun. And so Kim, it doesn't look like he has sunglasses on. Um, and he lost the ball in the sun. The sun's the sun's straight up, and it, it seems like everybody would have sunglasses on, regardless. Uh, and it cost him. Certainly did. Well, once again, got the first two outs, got a pop up, but didn't get the out there. That's going to go down as a base hit. So here's the first 300 hitter. Sisk is hitting 339 coming into this at bat. Okay. No harm other than that one run scored as Lizarraga goes to MJ Kim, third to second base, to record that final out. But it's a one nothing ball game. One to nothing.
Excellent batting average for the Broncos up and down, and that's one of the reasons we've had that success in conference and out of conference. 23 and 16 overall record, 12, well, make it 23 and 18 now after dropping two yesterday, and 12 and 10 in conference. Right. We were sitting in third place solo there, as Mr. Johnson was talking about, in conference standings, pending what happened between the other opponents behind Midland and NMJC. So we're, we're tied with Odessa College for second. Okay. And so Midland College and New Mexico Junior College are tied for first. Okay. Both of them are 18 and four. Gotcha. So in reality, we'd be tied for third if you got two tied for first, Correct. right? Okay. I guess I assume if it ended that way today, yes, there's some kind of tiebreaker. Yes, sir. <clears throat> and I don't remember what the tiebreaker head to head, is. Um, uh, I think it does go head-to-head -head first, right. and then after that, then it's like conference opponents. Well, I don't remember exactly. I'd have to take a look at it. Check swing, third strike. Wow. So three up, three down, go the Broncos, and... They will trail 1-0 after one complete. So Biggs, the right fielder. Sharp ground ball through the six hole for a single. Seeing eye single right there, and that's kind of what I was talking about. Yesterday, everything they hit seemed to find a hole, and there's a classic example right there. It doesn't have to be a home run. Once again, they've got the leadoff batter on board. He just upped his average from 256. <laughs> Certainly did. Next step, number three, Dylan Tate. Mentioned Mr. Tate earlier in the broadcast. Does like to bunt the ball and has got good wheels. Wouldn't be a bit surprised to see him push, try and push someone over and get a sc somebody into scoring position. Hit, hitting 250 right now. I think it was just because it was in between. 
So we're playing with Game Changer here a little bit. That's who, uh, uh, down in the dugout, they actually keep the stats for the game. And, and we're got... getting that on on the tablet here. So. Exactly. Okay. So we're trying to set that up. That was that little cut fastball that got away from the catcher. And I guess it did it hit him because it was an 0-2 count, wasn't it? I think it hit him on the back foot. Okay. Well, first two batters up are on board. Next to the league, number five, Ty Clubs. So the eight spot hitter at the plate now for Western Texas College. Nobody down, two on. WTC up 1 0 here. Top of the second inning, and Claus squares around a bunt right back in the pitcher, and they're going to go third and got him. Not a good bunt by Claus at all. Not at all. It needed to be firmer and to the line more. And being a lefty, Alvarez is already set up to throw to third when he feels the baseball. Great point. So, Great point. It was easier for him to go to third right, than it was to first. Correct. A right-hander <laughs> would have had to spin around and throw to third. Next to the plate, number two, Caleb Castillo. So the sacrifice goes awry there. The small ball attempt does not work. One down, still two on. And Castillo at the plate. Castillo, the shortstop, fouls out one back into the screen. Castillo hitting is hitting 246. They don't have any. They just had one guy so far hitting over 300, like you're talking about. And uh, they've had a bunch of base runners already. They certainly have. And they've got two hits in the ball game. One, of course, that seeing eye single, and uh, he's just saw, and then the sun aided single. Oh, oh my and gosh. wow, that one hurt. That was a fastball, and that just caught him. He tried to turn. I think that got, I don't know if that got him on the cheek or not, Jeff. Oh, that, I hope not. Yeah. I hope that he turned and got that in the shoulder, got the shoulder up, because that's a lot more meat there than there is in the cheek. Right. Well, that will load the bases. Back to the top of the order at number eight, Nathaniel Lopez. So the leadoff hitter again, Nathaniel Lopez. Bases are loaded, one out. And Ovier Alvarez, the Bronco pitcher, is he's just wild right now, and he needs to, uh, you know, he's got he he doesn't have any room for any any more base runners, and he's going to have to pitch to this guy. Ball one, high again with a fastball. Pressure situation here. You got one down. The last thing you want to do is fall behind anymore. We had trouble scoring runs yesterday, and hopefully the offense will come alive here for the Broncos, but you don't want to give up any more freebies if you can avoid it. Right. He, he did get that breaking ball over, so. Well, hopefully, yeah, starting to get the command of the pitches. Right. And I'm sure being the leadoff hitter the you know he's probably wanting to take a few pitches see if he can throw strikes still missed with that breaking ball again now what did lopez do his last time up do we remember i he didn't strike out did he but he did he ground out fly out i don't remember i don't think he took a lot of pitches either no he didn't so a little bit more disciplined at the plate this time especially after a couple of free passes and a hit batter or actually two hit batters Run the count to three, to three and one, and he's got to throw a strike here. Or he's going to walk a run in, for sure. And you know that Lopez has got the green light here. Juco baseball, three and one count. The coaches would love to see him pipe a fastball at him. Just yeah, there's that big swing right there. You will see that green lights. There's no not, not going to be a lot of takes at this level. Right, but that probably was ball four he just swung at. It was about <laughs> chest high. Uh, we, was, need a, we need a, a ground hard ground ball to one of the middle infielders to, in turn two to get out of this. Certainly do. Uh, 
Tried to go back to that curveball, no. threw it down in the dirt, and that's going to be a walk in another run for Western Texas College. Coming across the plate there is Biggs, I believe. Nope, that's number three. That's still in Tate, excuse me. Yep. Next up, number 29, Evan Morrison. Didn't you say Evan hit two home runs yesterday? He's got the bases loaded. He certainly and, does. And I'm sure he's licking his chops right now. And he's mad because he struck out last time. <laughs> I'm thinking steady diet of curveballs right here. I don't know that I would want to throw him a fastball. Have right. him turn on that and watch it go over the Richland Auto Group scoreboard there. Not sure if that was an off speed or just kind of a, a, a little cut fastball there. I think it was that cut fastball. Okay. Looked like it had a little bit of movement. But, right. But he's got up in the count here, 0 and 2. Trying to find an out. Popped up, but back behind, out of play. So another off speed there. So the audience can probably hear the wind blowing straight in our window just about. I think so. <laughs> and I tried to turn it down. Gene says it's not as loud for them as it is maybe right. for us. I hope that's the case. If it is, then you should text Mr. Dad. Got him. Yeah, sorry. I'm talking here not watching the ball game. Got him on a, uh, another breaking ball. That's his second strikeout. Next at the plate, number 21, Sebastian Huerta. So that brings the number of outs to two. Two outs in the inning. The base is still loaded. And the catcher up, number three hitter. Huerta walked his first time at the plate. Fouls off the first offering there from Olvidrez. I'm looking at the pitch count, Jeff. That was his 41st pitch. We're in the second inning. That's right. not. <laughs> like you said, it's hard to go uh, five innings pitching. I mean, having that many pitches. Yes, sir. I don't know what that pitch is. I think that's his split finger. I know. It's weird. I don't, I don't it, think that's his fastball because it's. Yeah, it doesn't seem to have the velocity that right. fastball does, but it's got a little bit of a tail to it, but it's not a curveball, definitely. So, good pitch there, and the count goes one and two. Huerta, still the bases loaded. Base hit here would probably score two. If he could get out of this with just giving up one run, I mean, that's a win-win. Massive victory. I agree completely. Way outside on that offering. You know, Alvarez. He just he doesn't look comfor comfortable on the mound to me from from the from the first inning to now. So he just can't get in a groove. It seems like. I think that's exactly right. And normally, whenever he's pitching on those six wins that he's had, which is the most on the Broncos staff, MJ Kim tracks that one down, gets the out at first, and they do get out with just one run. But yeah, as far as comfortability. He doesn't look like, I mean, whenever he's throwing well in those six wins, he just moves. Right. Uh, you know, he's not thinking. It's just complete reaction and uh, uh, getting it done. Got a one-hop ground ball to the second baseman for the last out of the inning. Gave up one run and, and had a bunch of bases were full of loaded the whole time. They certainly were. That was way too many walks and hit batters on that one. They did not have a hit that inning at all. Uh, uh, so, well, actually, yeah, they did. They had the leadoff uh, 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 seeing eye single there through right. the six hole, like you said.
two quick strikes there on O. O with one of the best batting averages on the team. One of one, two, three, four, five Broncos that are hitting 370 or above. He's in at 371. So Clawson, the last two pitches, he struck him out in uh, the strike two was on the corner and that one was a little bit further off the corner and the umpire's going to call that so you just got to adjust to it. Next at the plate, number 20, Adonis Bernal. That's exactly what they did to O yesterday too. They pitched him away the entire game and he just, you've got to make that adjustment right. like you said. And he is capable of going opposite field. He is not a pull-only hitter. As a matter of fact, like a lot of the Koreans that we have on the team, they kind of have that. They have that slappy type swing that they can go to. And you'll right. see that from MJ Kim in the lineup and then uh, uh, Hiro Ayun Han later on, the designated hitter. And if he or and also Jun Ho Son. All three of those guys, they will, they'll, they'll fake the bunt and then come back and do the slap, slap a uh, 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 single too. Uh. Right. Clawson's throwing lots of strikes. That one was close too. The catcher wanted it. I Didn't guess, get it. <laughs> I guess it was up just a bit. Maybe just a bit. Say good eye for Mr. Bernal or good luck, I guess either one. <laughs> That one fouled back out of play. It wasn't going to take him a chance on another curveball offering there from Clawson. I'm going to jinx us. The wind looks like it's died just a little it bit. It has. Oh, you can take a look at this, the flags there in center field there, right center field, if they show another shot of that at some point in time. And they have. They're, they're not furling like they were earlier on. Popped it up. This one could That's be That's going to be tough. That was an outstanding catch wow. by the second baseman. How did he find that? He looked completely lost and then just turned around and threw the glove out there and, and, and made the catch. Made it look easy. He was facing the center field wall when he <laughs> or the left right field wall when he made the catch. It was a, that was a really good play. That was. A nice athleticism. The second baseman there, Nathaniel Lopez for WTC. Next at the plate, number seven, he Ryan Pond. Han has been hitting extremely well lately. Had a great series there against Clarendon. Had not been in the batting order prior to that series, at least not as a regular. And now, of course, gets the start as the DH here in Game 3. There's that outside pitch, and they're going to call... A strike because he swung after the fact or give him a warning and I think that's kind of a shot at the umpire saying hey you know this is junior college baseball we don't call the river here but I think he was fixing to call him out I, I mean yeah he uh, that's you do something like that that's he's lucky he did not get called right called out. And I get it. You know, he's a little upset about the outside pitch and the possibility of being called strikes, but you've got to, got to adjust to where the umpire is and what he's doing. And well, it's and not like he's been inconsistent. Yeah, and you don't want to get tossed out of the game either. Yes, I mean, on, on, a, on, a, on a called strike when, you, when you're one of the best hitters. Yes, sir. That one was real close, too. That one could have been could have been rung up on that one. Curveball maybe missed just a little bit, but he's trying to break back into that strike zone. Clawson's around the zone right now. Yes, sir. That one a little, one of the farthest away we've seen uh, of his offerings there, trying to get him to go fishing a little bit. Okay, here comes the wind back in the window. Yes, of course. <laughs> Money pitch on the way, and it was fouled off there to the left-hand side there by Hirayon Han. Struck him out. Boy, he tied him up on that inside fastball. Certainly did. Was expecting the outside, and that's a great job. Working the inside-outside, you know. He 
you've been nailing the outside corner, the batter starts leaning towards that direction. What do you do? You come in and pitch in to win. Yeah, he was, he was not ready for that fastball for sure. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> Western Texas getting a job done on the mound. They've looked very, very good against a Bronco offense that's, well, known for their offense, right. or a Bronco team that's known for the offense. Look, looks like we have a new pitcher coming in, Jeff. Already? Wow, yes. you were talking about the pitch count. It was elevated. Well, let's see who this is. Number 22 on the roster. That is Alejandro Torres Rivera, freshman right-hander from Kissimmee, Florida. Okay. We'll get you some stats on him here in just a second. So his record, it looks like it's three and three with the 570 ERA. Okay. So like I said, that 570 ERA, if you're playing in the pros, you're like, oh my gosh, this guy, you know, that's that's not a great ERA for pro baseball, but in junior college baseball, like I said, anything, I don't know, anything below seven is, is somewhat respectable. I think, you know, a seven ERA is probably close to about a four ERA in the pros. Right. Five ERA, pretty close to like a three or so, and so you start getting below there. You get guys, and you will see pitchers that that are still, you know, they're they've got a one two ERA and, and just blowing and going great strikeouts. But those guys are the ones that are kind of the D one bounce back kids. Right. They've already been or are projected to go to the next level. They've already signed pretty much or been scouted and drafted. First up for Western so Torres Rivera side, throws from the right seven, side. Big kid. Helton. And the wind is blowing again. Certainly is. And a strike offering there from Torres to start things off. Nice throw on the run there by Lizarraga and a good stretch by Julian Payan at first base and Broncos get the first out. That slow hit roller, he played it really well. One hopped it to first, made an easy play for the first baseman to pick up. Good way to start. And that's one of the things you'll see on that throw, high schoolers, if you notice that, or kids playing in a, at a younger age division, throw that ball into the dirt and give your first baseman a chance to pick it. Don't try and wing it over there in the air and then throw it into right center, right field. Uh, uh, yeah, honestly, that long hop off the, off the especially artificial artificially, turf, yeah. it's, it's, it's a waste high. It's a, e it's a e pretty easy play to make. And that's a great point. We are playing on artificial turf infield. And so, yeah, if you're playing on a normal field, that could catch the gopher hole or whatever regularity is. It could, or the, yeah. little, or the one grass clump that's green. Or <laughs> exactly. And go off kilter, and your first baseman stand there looking at like, what are you doing? Struck him out with a good curveball. All right, Broncos looking good here in the top of the third on the defensive side. So that makes the second out of the inning, and uh, the Broncos are only down two runs, believe it or not, after all the base runners the, the first two innings. Well, and you got to think that the offense is going to get on board. They're going to figure out the Western Texas uh, pitching staff, and, you know, you're starting to see – Day two, pitching becomes a, even more at a premium. You've used your top starters already. You've probably used a lot of your top pull bin, bullpen guys. You'll see it in game four once you get into the nine-inning game, especially if this one goes all seven. Yeah, bullpen starts getting, our pitching staff gets pretty thin. Right, and uh, Torres Rivera, it looks like a little slider. I call it a curveball. It's got a pretty tight break to it. That There it is again. Struck him out. Excellent, excellent inning for the Broncos and the reliever Alejandro Torres gets two strikeouts and a ground out and gets out of the third, one, two, three.
job with a two-run lead. Quan, the shortstop for New Mexico Military Institute, and can't quite get that one past the third baseman. Nice pickup by him. And the first batter up for NMMI is Depp. That was a good pickup by the third baseman just now. Next at the plate, number 37, Julian Payan. Yeah, not an easy play trying to go into the hole, but it was glove hand side. Got the shortstop and then made the good throw over to first base to get Han, to get, excuse me, not Han, to get Quan. Payan, that one came off of the front foot foul ball. So he's down 0-2 quickly and Clausen once again ahead. Yeah, he's getting ahead with the, with the fastball and, and just working the zone. I bet all the left-handed hitters have talked to each other, and they know that the umpire is going to call that fastball off the plate a strike, and they've got to try to, adjustment. try to foul that thing off if they can. He tried to go outside on that one, too, and just a little bit too far outside. Good eye by Payan. Tries to come back inside with the, foul, foul with the curveball, excuse me, down into the dirt. And the count two and two. Payan, 312 batting average, and that one's probably going to fall. No, the right oh, wow. fielder, left fielder, great job on the run making the catch on that one. And the wind maybe just held that one up a it little did. bit. Clawson's getting some good defensive plays behind him for sure. Certainly. Good play by a third baseman. Already this inning, now gets one from another player on the left-hand side, the left fielder. Left fielder there for... WTC is Ty Claus. And at the plate now for NMMI, MJ Kim. Kim worked his way into the lineup card. Combination of some injuries uh, to the Broncos and then just, he was a starter last year for the Broncos whenever they went to regionals in 2023. At second base. He hit that ball hard, but, but the wind held it up just enough for the center fielder. Certainly did. Almost to the warning track, but not going to be enough in another 1-2-3 inning for Clawson and WTC. Pitching staff looking good, throwing the shutout right now against the Broncos. It is headed into the top of the fourth, 2-0 in favor of the Westerners, and they're coming up to bat. Side there by Torres, still in Tate at the plate. Talked a couple of times about his bunting ability, and he hasn't shown it to us yet. He's going to, going <laughs> to, of course, because I talked about it, right? Right, down in the count, 0 2, probably not going to try to bunt, but. I mean, he was up probably, what, eight, nine times yesterday, and I bet he bunted five of those times. Really? Yeah, okay. exactly. So that's why I, I'm really not lying. Go back and look at those games, and you'll see what I mean. 
As a matter of fact, I even made a comment because I think you bunted twice whenever they were up by six runs or more, and that's just one of those things. It's like, really, you're going to bunt whenever you're up by that much? Come on, guys. But <laughs> that's his style of baseball, so it's hard to take the take away a kid's game. Not his fault that their his team was up. Torres Rivera got the slider over for a strike. In and out. Three strikeouts now for Alejandro Torres. Looking good on the mound for the Broncos. Trying to match what Clausen's doing on the opposite side for WTC. Next at the plate, number five, Ty Claus. Another tough play at third base, and oh no, the first baseman dropped it. Pion scooped it and then just couldn't. Had the trampoline in the glove there, it just popped out. It just short hopped him just a hair into his, into his chest, and just like you said, couldn't hold on to it. Good play by the third baseman. Yeah, another great job by Lizarraga, and did the same exact thing like he did the last time. Didn't quite short hop it quite as much that. And like I said, may have, may have Handcuffed a little bit, Payan trying to receive that one. So one on, one down, and there's going to go one to right field. Getting a little bit of a late break and not going to make the play is Junho Son in right field. And coming all the way from first base to play the plate safe. Great hustle on the base running there by number five, Ty Claus. He was going at contact. As soon as he saw that one was down, just headed and good speed on the base pass. That's going to go down as a triple for Claus. Excuse me, Dylan Tate, the one that was score, came in to score. Yeah, Tate can really run, and uh, the ball was a line drive that was just tailing away from the right fielder and got to the corner. The relay throw, it was close, but, but the runner was safe with the stand-up triple. Well, and that's the difference of hitting into left field where the ball kind of gets held up a little bit. We saw that on Julian Payans. I thought that one was going to get down, and the wind held it up. That one blew it away from Son there in right field and ended up being a triple and a run score. Yeah, that ball coming off of a right-handed hitter's bat is going to be tailing anyway, and uh, the wind was pushing it even more. So, Great point on the right-handed hitter and that spin just coming off the end of the cap of the bat. Well struck ball, definitely a base hit, no doubt about it. So the Broncos have the infield in trying to cut off that run. There, there is one out, but with the runner at third, you know they, they. We need to, we need to get the third out, and not give up any more runs on in this inning. I think this is Coach Cook realizing that his team's offensive production is struggling a little bit right now, and so. Coach Cook, not a big small ball guy. You won't see him call for the bunt a whole lot. He doesn't like to play up like this either. He'd rather just kind of like take the punches. Uh, uh, but I think he's seeing something that, you know, hey, we can't get too far behind in this ball game or we're going to be in trouble. Right. With the, you know, as the infielders are in more, there's less angles. And, and it's uh, as a batter, you have a better chance of getting that ball through the infield. Strike three, though, goes dropped, goes down to first base. Sia Jono throws a strike to Payan at first base, and so that is out number two. You'll see the outfield probably back up now. Right. That was a great. Uh, that was a great pitch. It, I'm not sure if that's a slider or it, look, it could be a splitter. Next up, number 29, Evan Morrison. Now you got to deal with the big two-spot hitter, Evan Morrison, and he rolls over the top of that one to Payan, and Payan likes to take it himself. Tags the bag, and the Broncos get out, but do give up one more. It is three to zero as we head into the bottom of the fourth inning. Good job of just giving up one run, though. Yes, Again. sir. No doubt. I completely agree. That could have been a lot worse. Stranded the runner there at third base, and yeah, great job with only one out. It could be a lot worse than three to nothing. Yes. And, and the Broncos are still in the game. Still got uh, uh, four at-bats. Oh, yeah. Uh, and hopefully their bats, they're just topping a lot of balls. And, uh, you know, they need to start hitting some hard ground balls and, and line drives, hopefully. 
Exactly. And I don't, you know, we, you know, the hardest hit ball I think we've seen is that one by MJ Kim. Payans wasn't too bad, you know, and Kwan, who went to third base, could have just didn't quite have the angle to get through the hole. So anyway, Mize had a couple of shots. It's not like they're hitting poorly, but we've also seen a lot of, you know, rolling over the top, little, little, you know, oopsie swings and a, a lot of easy ground outs and fly balls too. Right. Hopefully NMMI can figure things out here. Bottom of the fourth, and who have we got up here? I'm not, let's see. I think we're top of the lineup, I believe. Bernie Kosa, or Bernie Kosa, or Bernie Sakata. Bottom of the fourth inning, and first up, the Top of the order for NMMI, number one, Bernie Sokata. So the Broncos need Sakaras to get on base and, and uh, start a little rally right here. Because Clausen has not been under pressure, hadn't had any base runners very much, so and he's been getting ahead with fastballs to start the hitters off with. Have we had anybody on base? There you go. There's a oh, start there right go. there. Hit by pitch. Nice. Not to say that you want the cars to get hit, but we need base runners badly. And it, and it missed the shin the shin guard protector, protection that he had of on. Of course, so. and hits him in the foot, right? Yeah. <laughs> Got all kinds of extra armor on the batting side there or the pitching side, and it missed all of it and it, hit the unprotected parts. It did. Yeah, we need him to work that off because I, I know he has good speed. So certainly does. One of the he is the lead big stealer for the Broncos with 11 on the season. Only been caught twice. And MMI doesn't do a ton of base stealing. Again, part of that Coach Cook philosophy. He wants to hit the ball and hit doubles and triples, and then you don't need to steal. But Sakar is definitely that, capable. That's, that's what we needed to do. A giant hole in between the second baseman and first base. And uh, got runners on first and third. No outs right now. Exactly. Great running by Sakar. Saw it through on the right-hand side and didn't even make a pause at second base. Just made the turn and was going from the get-go. Knew he was going to be able to make that. Good piece of hitting there to the right-hand side by Song, the left-handed hitter, and that's kind of the advantage of being a left -hand, lefty on that and being, getting that pitch you can pull. Brings to the plate number six, Daniel Lizarraga. And, and with the middle infielders being a double play depth, the second baseman was shaded to second base, so that made the hole good size. Good cut there by Lizarraga on the fastball from Clausen. A little bit on the outside part of the plate and looked like Lizarraga was right on top of it, going with it, and just a little bit underneath. Broncos can definitely do some damage right here with the hit. That one popped up. The wind got a first base from number side. That's going to actually blow out of the field of play. I'm not sure that ball was in fair territory at some point. <laughs> I mean, before the wind, the wind's gusting pretty good now. Yes, and you can probably hear that. I know we can uh, 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 a little bit. And yeah, I, I think that was. I think that, that was like a routine fly ball to the right fielder with him moving a couple of steps over. And it blew all the way out, almost out of the secondary fence that we've got around the ballpark. That's how much that ball tailed. Big time. Okay. Your wind sock is missing too. Oh, is that why? That may be why it was so bad because the wind sock was gone. So Gene just closed the window for us, and maybe that'll cut down on the wind noise. My apologies. Oh, we had wind noise. <laughs> exactly. You and I are both deafened by it. Hey, I can hear you now. What a concept. It looks like the uh, Western Texas is playing for the double play and going to concede a run with the ball up the middle anyway. That makes a lot of sense. Let's get the two instead of the one. We're up by three, and 
We've been hitting the ball, and the NMMI has been struggling. I think I'd, I'd trade two outs for a run myself. Absolutely. Right now in the game, you would. Yeah, especially at this point in time of the game, no doubt. The Zaraga trying to get something started. And look at this. He's going to get a base hit. So finally, and look at it. We're going to go to third base to play. Not in time. The ball gets away from the third baseman. And now on his way to second is Lizaraga. So two more in scoring position. Very good base running then. With the ball kicking away from the third baseman from the throw from the left fielder to third, um, Lizaraga takes second base. And that's going to prompt a walk out to the bullpen, out to the mound there by the head coach, Gary Miller, the head coach. Don't think we've mentioned his name yet today for Western Texas College. Whole infield comes in, so we've got the sermon on the mound going here. So he wants to talk to his team and try and settle them down, say, hey, guys, all right, that's one run. Let's go and find ourselves an out. Nobody down here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Broncos finally getting something done on the offensive side. A couple of base hits and a hit batter. And NMMI trails by two with a tying potential run. Lizaraga there on second. Yeah, base hit would tie the game. Pretty sure it would. Because it looks like Lizaraga can run a little bit, so... Lizaraga has good speed. I mean, if you look at it up and down the lineup, pretty darn good speed across, except for Quan, the shortstop. He's had some hamstring problems. And then also, oh, probably one of the slower guys on the on the squad for MMI. But everybody else, base-stealing base potential speed. That pitch down low, and so ball one to Siojun O. They've been pitching him outside. We'll see if Siojun... Gets an inside pitch that he can turn on, or if he gets one that he can go oppo with. Tries to turn on that one. The curveball trying to come back into the heart of the plate, but still in the outer part. So Clausen, he is now in a high stress situation, which he hadn't been in. I mean, out of his stretch. And uh... well, when you talk about the pitch count, that is his 49th pitch. Uh, we were talking about our pitcher being 43 in the second in the inning. Second with, inning. <laughs> yeah, with not with, with right. only like one out. <laughs> Clawson's done a good job of throwing strikes for sure. Not getting behind or getting ahead of the hitters, not throwing a lot of balls. Great pitch in the outside part of the plate, just missed. I'm not sure that wasn't called a strike in the, in the second <laughs> inning. I think you're right. <laughs> exactly. That's got to be frustrating, but O gets the pass on that one, and he better be thankful. I'm going to call it a good take. Yeah, a <laughs> good call, yes. <laughs> Similar pitch, a little bit higher, a little bit maybe farther outside, and the count goes full. There's a reason O is in the four spot for the Broncos. Has the second most home runs on the team for NMMI. Good at bat. Excellent, yeah. I'll raise that pitch count, make sure the Clawson can't come back and try and throw, you know, relief or something strange in the fourth inning or fourth game four. Good thing about it, the bases are juiced with no outs still. Next to the plate, number 20, Adonis Bernal. And this is a little bit more what the Broncos are used to. I mean, we score runs, and we score them in bunches like this. We tend to have big innings. That's what Cook likes to play for is the big inning. We just need to finish it off with a couple of hits here and break this game open and sh uh, kind of open up the offensive floodgates. And I think if that happens, I think then the whole team will kind of relax a little bit, and then the swings will get a little bit better, right. Start sh stop short-arming everything and, uh, uh, you know, Turned on it. It he is going ball hard. Oh, the right fielder almost made a play just off the tip of his glove. That's going to be a base hit, and two runs will score. So the timely double there by Adonis Bernal. Great job by the left fielder just to get to that one. That is Ty Claus out there, and he hit the fence hard. He did hit it really hard. Uh, I'm surprised he's still upright. I am I mean, too. He's a one tough kid. I mean, he got right back up and, and grabbed the ball. And, I mean, because I was expecting 
us to get all three runs in and get get a triple out of that too because he's still down on the ground and the center fielder has to come over and grab the ball. So the ball tip, he, he was running to his to his glove or, or to his right as fast as he could go to the foul pole and the ball tipped off his glove. Great effort. It was a great effort because he ran into the wall full speed. He certainly did. Well, we got a tie ball game now and NMMI still with nobody down. Runners on second and third and a chance to go ahead here. With T. Ryan Han at the plate, the lefty. Right arm left. One and one the count. Evens up. Clawson's starting to miss the strike zone a little bit. I've a little bit more. Great observation. Than, than early. It's exactly right. Those were the ones that he was painting the corners with and getting the call, and now he's just a little bit off. This one, if nothing else, will be an RBI. It is a sack. Coming in, in plenty of time, is Sia John O oh, and kind of poking a little fun at his speed there, but had no problem scoring on that one out into the right field. And the Broncos now with their first lead in this series, believe it or not. Next to the plate, number 19, Jun Hook Kwa. So Han did his job, got the runner. Uh, in from third, one out, one out still. So, with the runner at third, another chance for NMMI get another run ahead here. Quan is the home run leader for the Broncos on the season with nine. Second in the RBI stat behind Adonis Bernal with 38, and that's going to be a base hit and a run scored for Jun Hook Quan. So NMMI increases their lead, five to three now. Still only one out and a runner at first base. Next to the plate, number 37, Julian Payat. So the Broncos are starting to find, starting to square some balls up now, and uh, they hadn't been doing that. And, uh, you know, they're just keeping trading places, those guys. That's exactly on base. Right. Much better swing, squaring the ball up. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's exactly what we were not doing. That's. If you would have saw those two games yesterday, you would have been like, yeah, they're just not not doing exactly that. Pickoff move, not in time there by Clausen. One ball, no strikes here. Payan at the plate. Trying to keep the rally going here. Broncos with five here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Couple of timely base hits. NMMI now with four base hits in the ball game and three of them have been this inning. Another pickoff move and a little bit closer to that time but back in time is Quan. Sorry, Jeff. I think I swallowed a piece of grass, maybe. <laughs> Crumb rubber, probably, right? Uh, 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 blew in from, yeah. Well, we finally got the wind closed and the uh, window closed, and now uh, the wind noise is not as nearly as much a factor. And I, yeah, realized, yeah, my windsock on my mic was off, and that was causing even more of the problem. And producer Gene Dow finally got that taken care of. Good at bat there by Payan as he gets the base on balls. And, now another runner in scoring position with Han, although I say that, and Han, a little slow going to second base, but no reason just because of the walk, but he is uh, not going to be running at 100% right now because they're still a little bit worried about some of his legs. Curveball, and now Han kind of caught in no man's land, but gets a catcher to go back to second base and immediately breaks for third, and so he will get the stolen base. You know, smart base running. I don't know if the catcher should have thrown it to second, but when he did, good base running, and he just took third. I've seen that play happen a lot in Little League. Yes, sir, exactly. You don't see it quite so much up here. Kids have got a little bit stronger arms or whatever, but... 
He knew he was kind of caught out in no man's land and faked the break back to second base, got the catcher to try and throw, and immediately went towards third. And that's what got him there safely. I'm not sure if the catcher would have uh, maybe closed, run at him a little bit, made him go one way or the other. I think he, I think he would have been in trouble, but he didn't. So now the another run for the Broncos, just 90 feet away. Good curveball by Clawson then. That one broke a ton. Kim was waiting for it and saw it as it was coming into the zone and then swung as it was going out into the left-handed batter's box. Got to prevent the double play. They're not going to, so the double play turn. The run will not score, but the Broncos do plate five in the bottom of the fourth. Go ahead. They're up in this one now, five to three, as we head into the top of the fifth. for NMMI, Jose Baroni got the air conditioning system turned on here, fixed the water issue, and now we got some cool air in so we can keep that window closed, prevent the wind noise. I think that helped my throat issues, too. <laughs> You're not going to be inhaling any more grass or crumb rubber or whatever else is coming in off of the field. First up for Western Texas, number 21, Sebastian Huerta. So the three-spot hitter due up for Western Texas as they try and make their comeback here, now trailing by two after a five-spot put up by NMMI in the bottom of the fourth. So Torres Rivera just needs to throw a lot of strikes, and he is. Yeah. He's ahead already 0-2 on the leadoff hitter here. <clears throat> Been dancing around the plate the whole ball game. I think he's got three strikeouts already, too. Make it four. <laughs> Great pitch. It looked like a slider. Definitely. Slider, cut fastball, something that was tailing down. Uh, uh, looks like it's coming right in there over the heart of the plate, maybe the slightly outside part of the plate, and then just kind of takes a nosedive off of the table. Next up, number seven, Harrison Helter. He's got a good fastball, too. We don't have a gun up here, do we? <laughs> Me, no, no. Yeah, by the way, I don't know if I ever introduced myself. My name is Jeff Gunn. I'm the Sports Information Director here for NMMI. But no, we usually have a radar gun, too. And maybe those guys are outside since we're kind of taking up the press box here today. I think they were outside because I was talking to a player. I said, is it going to be up on the scoreboard, the miles per hour? And he said, no, they have a They have a, uh, they do have a, little, a monitor. Yeah. That's down. I said, well, we can't see that up here. No, I mean, anyway, well, but. And if you look at our scoreboard, we do have a miles right. per hour section on the right. board, but it just, it hasn't worked in a couple of years. Cook has put, our head coach, Chris Cook, has done a lot of the field remodels. I mean, great job in, in making this field the way it looks and, and plays today. And he spent a lot of time trying to fix that scoreboard, but that's one of those panels that it just, it never did really work correctly. And right. it just, Yep. One of those things. Another strikeout on the slider from Torres Rivera. 
Next up, number 20, Sam Sitt. So Torres, Rivera looking awesome on the hill here now for the Broncos. Another strike. Compared to Alvarez, he looks really comfortable. I mean, he's got a good rhythm going. Certainly does. I agree. And yeah, it, 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 it's like Alvarez never just, just never found his rhythm. You're exactly right. That one close to being a strike, just a little bit down and out. Third base side, foul ball, just foul. Would have been a tough play for Lizarraga. He caught it, but that would have been one heck of a throw. That would have been a long, that, that's the longest throw a third baseman could make where he just fielded that ball. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, he's playing well in back of the bag there. I mean, and he was at the edge of the outfield grass and still going to his right or his Rivera. left. Uh, no, no, his right. Yeah. His right, right. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, no. His, his right, right, correct. Yes. I confused myself there. <laughs> Rivera is feeling it, isn't he? Wow. He's got a lot of confidence Struck right now. Struck out the side. And <laughs> he's going to do a little celebrating, and wisely so, or, or deservedly so. Good inning by the Broncos there. A good good bottom of the fourth and top of the fifth for NMMI. That's the best baseball we've played this series. So NMI with a chance now again to extend their lead. Finally kind of broke open the offensive canister. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. Took off the cellophane and the bat started heating up. Let's see if they can continue here. Yeah, Clausen, the pitcher for Western Texas, was cruising through four. Um, uh, or or through th the first three, I mean. And now the Broncos are hitting the ball hard. Certainly are. Well struck ball into the hole there on the right side. And a base hit for Sakatas. That brings to the plate number 10, Jim Cole Song. Clausen up to 70 pitches. Okay. So his pitch count went way up as of last inning. Certainly did. Yeah, he was 40 pitches in the start of that inning, right, wasn't he? Right, right. Opposite, but foul back into the hitting cages there for New Mexico Military Institute. Bronco hitters seeing the ball much better, uh, just just making better contact, as we said earlier. But well, I wonder if Clausen has lost any velocity. I don't think he has. I think he's just not quite hitting because that pitch right there is what he was doing so effectively uh, at the beginning of the ball game. That right. outside fastball. That pitch is easy, one ball wide off the plate, but the hitters just have to adjust to it. Exactly. <clears throat> and, he, and he was hitting that the first two innings and, and then, did, then was missing, as you said, after that. Another pickoff move, a little closer this time, but again, back safely is Sokotis. That was really close. <laughs> that was. I'm not sure he couldn't call him out. <laughs> Uh, 
Tejada's maybe a little lucky there, staying alive at first base. And like I said, he is a stolen base leader for NMMI. I'm sure he'd like nothing better than to try and swipe second. Not sure how that goes for Coach Cook and, and, and his team if he has if he gives the gay guys green lights or if everything is scripted, you know, signaled stolen bases. I don't know. I know Sakaris' foot is feeling better because he's looking pretty spry at first right now. So, because he he got hit right on top of the foot that last at bat. That's right. That's right. <clears throat> Another pickoff move, no tag made on that one. Just throw a little bit up high. Still a big hole again in between first base and the second base because he's in double play depth. And a left-handed hitter, if he can pull the ball, he's going to go opposite field. It's going to be a fly ball out into left. Can of corn there for Claus in left field. Yeah, that ball held up right to the left fielder, tailing away, but the wind kind of straightened it back out so but pretty well struck at least that time again barreling up the ball uh, a little bit just much more solid hits than what we were seeing earlier in the ball game next up number six daniel Luzaraga. clausen with the strike fastball right down the middle I keep losing my windsock on my mic as I keep twisting it to do the PA stuff. So. Another pickoff move, and again, back in time is Slocatus. They're definitely worried about him at first. Now, two run ball game. The last thing you want is another scoring, a runner in scoring position here. Now, with the way that Torres Rivera is pitching for NMMI. I think the script has flipped a little bit, and now Western Texas is a little bit worried about the offensive production. Trying to keep this game as close as possible. Good cut. Good cut at a good fastball there. Power on power on that play. The fastball, outer part of the plate. Good outside swing there by Lizarraga, just a little bit underneath. One and two the count, one down, one on. Two run ball game, the Institute out in front here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Starter on the mound still for Western Texas College. That is Colton Clausen, and he's pitched a gym in the first three innings. That was his 79th pitch. <clears throat> Most pitchers at this level, about 100 pitches or so is kind of, you know, the limit. You will see some coaches that will go beyond that. But typically, that's about what the coaches like to kind of hold them to. So fouled off by Lizarraga. That was a hit and run, Jeff, just then. I was wondering if Coach Cook was going to put uh, Sakaris in, in motion, and he did. We'll see if he does it again. Now Lizarraga's got to protect the plate with two strikes. Ooh, beautiful fastball. Outer part of the plate. Lizarraga thought it was a little far outside, but close enough to be called a strike, and it was. Next up, number 17, Seo Jun Oak. So NMMI got the first two or got the first runner on with a base hit there by Sakatis, but Son and Lizarraga down. Two straight outs, and that one was pretty close too. Very close. He's got a he's got a really good lead. Is he taking I don't even I got the pole right in my way of where he's looking right there with a window. Hit and run. He got him. Oh yep. Just got him before. Not a great break by Sokatis. Pretty quick move to the plate there by Clausen and a good throw down by the catcher, Where Sebastian Huerta. Yep. Yes. Yep. Quick release by the catcher, no doubt. It took a perfect play to get him and did just by a hair. Great job by WTC. On the defensive side, puts another zero spot up for NMMI. 
Five to three as we move on to the sixth inning. This one, game three, scheduled to go seven. If it were to go long, if it were tied up and go extra innings, then game four, which is normally a nine-inning game, would actually become the seven-inning game. So, I didn't realize that's the way that worked. Yes, sir. Okay. So even if this one only goes eight, uh, uh, if it does go extra, then the next one would be just a seven-inning game. But the first one scheduled seven, second one second uh, for nine o'clock. We will be doing both of these games today. Special thanks again to Gene Dow and KSVP TV or Pecos Valley Broadcasting Company for doing the streaming on this one. And I hope you're enjoying it. I think Gene's got the instant replay going. We've got three cameras out there, one on the first base side. One right here behind the plate, and then the center field camera, which is kind of a novelty at this level. And in high school, you don't see it. You know, you'll see it on ESPN, et cetera. It's a standard shot, but the transmitters, uh, uh, the distance uh, is kind of tough to overcome. But Gene Dow figured out a solution and got a little bit longer transmitter that can handle that. And I think it's looking beautiful out there. It I hope is. you're enjoying it. Those are great pictures, no, no doubt about it. Had a shot of the All-American board there up uh, uh, for the New Mexico Military Institute and our four All-Americans that we've got. Actually, five, sorry. I always forget about the last one there. Angel Angel Colon Aviles. Top of the sixth and first up, I believe, is number six. Yes, it is. It is Coleman Biggs. Takes the first pitch outside from Torres. Close, but just a little bit off of the plate. Second pitch goes inside and a little bit too far inside on that one. First time he's been behind the hitter in a while. I think so too. <coughs> that one down in the dirt gets away from the catcher, but nobody on base. Ball three though. Hopefully he can come back on him. Yep. Two-run ball game. The last thing you want is put one on the leadoff runner. You were talking about it at the beginning of the broadcast. You don't know what the percentage is of how often those guys score, but you got to think it's probably above 50% and probably closer to 70. Right. Next to the plate, number three, Dylan Tate. So the center fielder at the plate next for Western Texas College with the runner on, nobody down. So you can tell, Jeff, where, where the cutout is in front of the bases. Yes, sir. That that inside corner towards second base, that, that should be like 12 feet, I believe. Okay. And you can kind of gauge a lead by that anyway, but gotcha. But if that corner's in between their feet, they I mean that's a pretty good lead. Tate squares the bump but pulls it back and the ball fastball too high, ball one. And again, this time goes for it and can't connect. Makes the count one and one. The third baseman Lizaraga charging on that one trying to at least if nothing else get Tate at first base he's got some great speed as a center fielder there for WTC great pitch struck him out that's exactly what they needed another strikeout I believe that's number five for Torres Rivera I may be missing one too he had all three last inning Next up, number five, Ty Claus. Got the 8-9 hitters coming up here to try and finish things off. But the 8-9 hitters yesterday hit very well for WTC. <laughs> sure enough, there's a base hit. Well, if that gets through, it could be a run. They're going to hold him up at third base, and probably wisely so with one out. I don't know what the exit velocity on that. That was a hard hit. Certainly was. Son did everything he could to stop that from going all the way to the fence. He was on a full-on sprint. Lost his hat. Now he's going to have to go pick that back up. Yeah, if that goes to the fence, it's a run scored, and, a, and, and he would have had a stand-up triple for sure. 
Next up, number two, Caleb Castillo. So now Western Texas College with the tying run at second base. One down and the nine spot hitter at the plate. Well, half the infield's playing back and half the infield's playing up. So um, second baseman and the first baseman look like they may be coming home. Yeah, it's not the standard double play depth that you would see where, you know, your corners are in and the middle infields play a double play depth. It's the right hand side that's in. Interesting. Struck him out. Big time strikeout again for Torres Rivera. Gets out number two. Is that seven for him? Well, you know, we could check. Let's go to the box score. I remember you saying see. it was five. Wow, no, they're gonna say nine strikeouts. Wow, so we've been off. Uh, and, and just I'm a little sure bit. That, yeah, <laughs> we started. Start, we weren't counting soon enough. I don't think we were counting that first inning. Right. So my athletic director is sending me cryptic signals here. I don't know what he's trying to tell me. So I think he's just trying to mess with our heads here. Nice fastball. Did he not call that a strike? No, 3-0. How was that not? A, okay. 3-0 the count. Oh, look, look who's on deck. I know. Exactly. That's why. And with the bases loaded, coming up to the plate for WTC. Number 29, Evan Morrison, the man who had two home runs yesterday for the Westerners. So Mor Morrison has struck out twice and grounded out to the first baseman with, with the bases loaded while ago and uh, the last time up. Well, do you say to yourself, we're going to, we've got his number right now, or do you worry about what he did yesterday? Big swing there by Morrison as he was trying to go yard on that one. He, he was trying to empty the bases on that swing for <laughs> sure. Right. Inside a little further and Morrison plays a little dodgeball. Count goes to one and one. Two run ball game. Bases loaded for Morrison. Two spot hitter. Down low in the strike zone. The count in the favor now of Morrison. Maybe you can get him to roll over on something. And Look, of course, yo, go ahead. <laughs> looks like they're trying to work him in. They're going away right here. Got him, Got him, him to pop, pop up. up. Pitcher dancing around a what little bit. What a great bit. play. What a great play. <laughs> Not an easy play at all with this wind. I mean, it's just kind of swirling out there. Great job. Does it himself there. Torres Rivera, kind of the hero of the minute right now or the last couple of innings. The first baseman wasn't going to get to the ball, so no. the pitcher was – I mean, they're all good athletes, I, I think. So, they, he made a good good play on that fly ball for sure in the wind. And that's one of those It probably would have been fair uh, uh, where based on where he caught it. But, man, having to go back to the mound after having that one drop and you just threw a great pitch to get him to pop up with bases loaded, that's got to be tough. And the guy that hit two home runs yesterday is 0 for 4 today, which, man, that's a, that's a big plus. That is big, yes. You're exactly right. No balls have left the yard today either on either side. I mean, of course, NMMI did not have one out in either game yesterday, seven by the Western Texas College Westerners. But, uh, yeah, NMMI ahead in the hit count. Uh, uh, and that says 5-3 in the scoreboard. What have we got on four and, yeah, that's what I thought. I didn't think that was quite right. Four and five. So the hit count pretty close. NMMI ahead by one. Five hits to Western Texas is four, but the difference here is all of NMMI's hits came in the same inning almost. We bunched them up in that one inning and uh, some quality base running also. Good call. Yes, most definitely. Bottom of six and the four spot hitter due up for NMMI. Number 17, Seo Jun Oh. 
Clawson's still in, still on the mound for Western Texas, Jeff. We'll have to see what his pitch count is once Game Changer comes up with it. I don't like that it, it should automatically, as soon as that inning ends, it should come up, but it won't go until it actually gives a pitch to him. So right. we'll see it here in a second. Yeah, it takes a bit for it to. There's a there's a delay, in other words. Yes, so. sir. That's got to beam through all the different systems uh, uh, and, and Wi-Fi areas and to the satellite on the other side of the world and, <laughs> and then come back, right? There it is. So 83 pitches, according to Game Changer. Still a very well-pitched ball game thus far by their starter. Yeah, minus, minus the five-run inning, he's pitched really well. Certainly. Anytime you could put up those kinds of zeros. And, you know, even that five-run inning, and that could have been worse. We had guys, you know, still on base. As I recall, a guy on second base with two outs and just couldn't couldn't put another run across. Right. A little bit low. Ooh, they are going to call strike. And Seo Jun down on the called strike. He did not like that call for sure. I'm not sure I like that call. It's a little difficult to see from up here, you know, up, down, but that one probably was below the knees. A little shout there. You better be careful or yeah. he's going to get kicked out, and that's not what the Broncos want. So next up, Adonis Bernal pops that one, but up, but foul over the first base side, well out of play. Yeah, Clawson's finding a little more rhythm. I think so, too. It's, it's yeah, he's definitely recovered from that five spot. And now, of course, NMMI not barreling the ball or not making that solid contact like they were earlier. Heading the count 0-2 again. That one, great that two strike. That was trouble, absolutely. Going to get to the fence and on his way to third base, and he will make it standing up while he'll go ahead and slide just to stop on that turf. <laughs> but a triple by Adonis Bernal. Next at the plate, number seven, he, Ryan Thomas. He just caught too much of the plate with that fastball, Jeff, and, and Bernal took advantage of it. Great call. A little bit of a miss pitch with two strikes. That's not what you wanted to do, and Bernal made him pick. One down, so a sack fly situation here if Han can get something into the outfield deep enough. Well, they're going to concede the run up the middle because both middle infielders are all the way back, so... Yeah, just uh, the corner. That, surpri that, that surprises me this late, late in the game. game. You know, I'm a little surprised now, too, that you bring it up. Yeah, exactly, especially a game as close as this one. Yeah, and the first baseman's way back, so. Yeah, only third base playing base level, even with third base. And they've only got one more at bat. That's exactly right. Great point. Hmm. Bernal does have great speed, the center fielder for NMMI, second in stolen bases for NMMI with nine and has only been caught one time. That one popped up, and it's not going to get be enough for Bernal to score. Another athletic play by a pitcher making the catch. That wind is making the ball dance for sure. It's tough. He shifted about four times and uh, finally found the right, right way to make the catch on that one. He did that. Big out for Clawson, though, on that. You know, now he's got two. Of the sacrifice fly is off of the table. It's going to take a base hit to score Bernal. Popped him up. Right fielder. This one, center fielder thought he had it, but it's going to blow back into right center. And right fielder makes the play. Yeah, great job of pitching by Clawson after that triple. Certainly was. No doubt. Only one mistake pitch. I mean, he pitched well against Bernal, got ahead of him 0-2, you know, and then just a little bit tried to go outside and just didn't go quite far enough. And that was his 97th pitch, I, and, you know, he's pitched a really good game. That's exactly what you want if you're Western Texas College. You just saved your entire bullpen for game four. So everybody is now uh, 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 on the table. You can throw 
Yeah, yeah. Everybody, everybody, you did, you did not, not have, have to use a, a relief pitcher like we did. Uh, uh, that, that could come, come become, become big in game four, those be. nine innings. You know, you know if, if they, they tied the game up, up they'd, they'd, they'd have, have to go to their bullpen. bullpen but, but, uh, and, and, and they, they want to tie the game up or go ahead for sure. Well, and I'm not certain they'll take Clausen out if they tie it up here. I mean, at 96, there's a very distinct possibility. Of, you know, Coach asks him, hey, how's the arm feeling? If it's going good, they may throw him back out there again. So up to bat for Western Texas is the catcher, Sebastian Huerta, in their top, in their top of the seventh. The Westerners need two runs to tie. And Alejandro Torres Rivera, the Bronco pitcher, has pitched a stellar Four innings so far. A little delay here, and I'm not sure what exactly is going on. I don't know if uh, Sayujano, Coach Cook, coming to talk to him. I don't know if he hurt his hand, maybe. Was there a ball in the dirt? Did he get popped? I'm not certain what happened exactly. I'm not sure. But the athletic trainer not coming out, at least not right now. So, but a little pause in the action and. Torres Rivera staying loose there, throwing to his third baseman, Daniel Lizarraga. I can't tell what they're looking at, if it's a hand or a wrist or... I wasn't watching the warm-up pitches, so... No, I wasn't either. I was trying to get us some pizza there for in-between games so we can have something to eat. I was thinking with my stomach. That happens often. Looks like a trainer's going to take a look. Yeah, there's Grace Pineda. Our assistant athletic, athletic trainer. trainer. She, she does, does a great, great job, job for NMMI. NMMI. Definitely happy to have both her and John Carpenter, our head athletic, athletic trainer. They do a great job taking care of the 24 sport programs that we have at New Mexico Military Institute at the high school and college level. She's taping something. Uh, looks like putting something on his thumb, right? Some athletic tape on his thumb, maybe. Yeah. Now, is that glove hand side? Yeah, he's a right-hander. No, yeah, he's a right-hander. So, there's a catcher. Don't see any left-handed catchers, right? Right. Sometimes, if you get a, if you catch that ball down low and your gloves turn and your thumbs down, it can, it can bend it awkwardly. So now, finishing up his warm-up pitches, there is Torres Rivera. First up for the Westerners, their three spot hitter, number 21, Sebastian Puerta. So Torres going to have to go through the heart of the order, three, four, five, starts him off with a curveball, and strike one called against Sebastian Puerta. Great pitch. Comes back at the fastball, rolled over the top. Quan makes the easy play at shortstop, 6 3 to Payan. And, and one, one quick, quick out. Two, two pitches, pitches, one out. I Can't like You it. cannot beat that. No, sir. Great, Great call. call. So up to bat now, Harrison Helton, the third baseman for the Westerners. Grounds that ball hard past the third base side. 
in foul, foul territory. territory. Torres Rivera getting, getting ahead in the, the count. Curveball off the plate to even the count, one and one. Broncos on defense playing straight away. Great slider uh, to get ahead in the count. Fell the ball off with the end of the bat, which is good. Pitcher's always trying to miss the barrel of the bat. So, and, and, and uh, Torres Rivera has done that so far. Done an outstanding relief job. Well, ahead in the count here, and was just talking with Gene Dow there, and of course he pulled up a list of all the left-handed catchers that made it into the pros and was giving me the, the rundown on that. Down on strikes, 10th strikeout of the ball game for Torres Rivera, if we're counting right. Yeah, great slider in the dirt. Had the hitter in a defensive spot, and uh, we got a pinch hitter. Number, number 12. Number 12. Pinch hitter at the plate, number 12, Ben Blanchard. Westerners down to their last out. Well struck, but in the center field, Bernal goes back, makes the catch, and that's the ball game. The Broncos take this one five to three in the seven inning offering here. One win for the Broncos. They lost both yesterday. We'll have another game here in about 30 minutes or so. Uh, that will be a nine inning contest and NMMI will try and make the split here after dropping both games on Friday, come back and take two, hopefully, on Saturday. Torres Rivera pitched five scoreless innings, 60 pitches, and got the win. That's awesome stats. Oh, great. I, that, it's almost good enough to where you're like, okay, I want you to stay warm. You're going to be our starter for game four. <laughs> he could. You just keep him moving around a little bit. Exactly. Right? That's right. Keep that arm warm, kid. You're, not, you're, not, uh, you're going back out there on the mound, darn it. Very, very good. Excellent, excellent game. And, you know, hats off to, to Colton Klaus in the starting or the game, the pitcher there for WTC went the distance. All seven innings are all six and a half, I guess, rather, uh, as the Broncos did not have to bat in the bottom of the seventh inning, but did a great job. Just one small hiccup there uh, in, what was that, the fourth inning, gave up the five spot as the Broncos finally were able to put the barrel of the bat on the ball. Yeah, good job by uh, – both pitchers um, and uh, institute put, put the put that, that one inning together, and that's, that's all it takes sometimes. sometimes. You don't you, you don't have, have to score five every inning, and you, you get, get a quality, quality relief job like, like that, and it just takes a few runs and and uh, to give your get your team back on track. That's right. Great defensive game for both teams. I don't think there was a single error in the ball game, at least as far as you know direct fielding error, maybe a throwing error, but I don't even remember that. Um, just, um, just, yeah, yeah solid, solid, solid game. game. And you, you don't, don't see a lot of 5-3 baseball, baseball games in junior college baseball. baseball. Um, you, you know, know typically, typically the score's closer, 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 closer to double digits, digits for both teams. teams. So great, great, great ball, ball game. game. Went very, very quickly. quickly. And, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, both, both teams, teams with a lot of pitching for game four. So we should have a good one here coming up in just a few. We should. All right. Well, I guess we'll go ahead and take a break, all right? And we'll do a little eating here. We've got some pizza coming. And uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, we're going to put some links on the web. I realize we didn't have some of our stuff out there like we uh, hope. So hopefully we've got a, quite a few viewers. If not, pass it on. And, of course, this will be available archived later on so you can watch this 